Before you invest, there's four things you need to know which will help determine which is the best investment for you. I'll first explain the concept of risk, as most of what will follow will determine the amount of risk you should take. But why would anyone want to take risk with an investment? Well, frankly, risk is required to achieve higher returns. The more risk in your investment, the more volatility you can expect. Now, volatility is the up and down movements you see when markets perform well or not so well. Certain asset classes carry more risk than others. The riskier the asset class, the higher the potential returns. Here are the four major asset classes ranked from lowest risk to the highest risk. So this is the table you should read as the expected return on this side, this being the lowest possible return and this being the highest possible return. This section illustrates the volatility, whereas on this side of the table, it's the lowest possible volatility, whereas on this side, the higher up on this scale, the higher the volatility. The first one is money markets. With money markets, your returns are linked to interest rates. If the interest rates rise, so will your investment returns. It's extremely low risk and offers stable returns. This is perfect to park your money for about 12 months. The next asset class is bonds. Now basically, bonds are a loan from investors to borrowers. Bonds can be seen as an IOU. Bonds are normally issued by corporates or governments. They issue bonds if they want to expand or finance a new project. Interestingly enough, bonds have an inverse effect on interest rates. If they rise, bond prices will fall. Bonds normally deliver higher returns than money market. But it isn't to say that bonds are without risk. For one, if they can't pay back the money they borrowed, you run the risk of them defaulting on the bond. With bonds, it's recommended that you invest for at least three years. Now the next asset class is property and shares. Property can be in two forms. You can either invest directly and buy a physical building or invest in REITs. REITs are real estate investment trusts and are companies that are listed on the JSE and only invest in properties. If you invest in shares, you basically buy a part of the company and subsequently, you will also share in the profits and the growth of that company. When you invest in property and shares, it's recommended that you invest for at least five years plus. And please, just stick to the plan. If you back out too soon, you'll make more damage than what you can expect. Bottom line, lower risk equals lower returns, but more consistent. Higher risk equals higher potential returns, but with more volatility. Now, this is pretty interesting. If you don't take risk with your investment, you actually run the risk of not outperforming inflation, which means not taking a risk isn't all risk-free. Now that you understand the concept of risk, there are a few things you need to determine which will influence the amount of risk you can take. And it will also help you determine which is the best type of investment suited for you. The first one you want to know is how long you want to invest. The more time you have, the more risk you can take and the higher potential returns can be achieved. If you have time, there's more of it to allow for your investment to recover if the market's crashed. Risk and volatility in your investment fades away over time. This is, of course, if you're comfortable with the amount of risk. The second one is the liquidity requirement. You need to know if you want access to the money. If you do want access to your money, certain types of investments will not work for you. For example, if you want access to your money, you don't want to invest in a retirement annuity as you'll only have access to your money at retirement. Now, liquidity also plays a role in the amount of risk you can take. If you suddenly need cash and your investment value just dropped, this could result in you realizing a loss that could have otherwise had time to recover. Thirdly, as growth expectancy. The higher returns you expect, the more risk you must be willing to take. But luckily, there are smart ways to lower your risk. For one, is diversifying, not putting all your eggs in one basket. The growth is determined according to the underlying funds you chose and how well they performed. Now, fourthly, is the tax implication. Certain investments have certain tax benefits, but it all depends on what you want to achieve. If you want to pay less tax, look at a retirement annuity or a tax-free savings. But there are ultimately four different types of investment vehicles, and here they are. Let's take a look at unit trusts. Unit trusts are perfect if you require access to your investment, as there is no term. It's also better to invest in a unit trust if your tax rate is lower than 30%.
With the unit trust, you are taxed at your individual rate. Basically, if you earn more than 321,600 per annum, you want to look at the next one. Endowments. Endowments are a good investment if you want to invest long term and if your individual tax rate is higher than 30%. With endowments, the tax is capped at 30% on income and 12% on capital gains tax. Tax-free savings. Tax-free savings should be one of the first investments alongside a retirement annuity. With tax-free savings, there's no term and it's also not taxed at all. Retirement annuities. Retirement annuities are used to save for retirement and can help you save tax as the contributions are deductible from tax. But again, the payout will be taxable. If you manage to determine the first three things, you'll now be able to determine what the amount of risk you are comfortable with. If you've determined the fourth thing, that ties things together and help you make the decision on what's the best type of investment for you. Well, I hope this video gave you some insight into the concept of risk and help you make a decision on what's the best type of investment that is right for you. Risk isn't for the faint-hearted. Take Gert, for example. He hates taking risk. But I mean, who can blame him? He doesn't have any guts. Now, thank you so much for watching. Like that smash button, subscribe, and until next time, bye-bye. Thank you!